Nate, take it away. What is there to expect leading up to the draft? Okay, well, before I get into that, hey, Connor, um, you you, gonna, you got your mock, mock already finished? Do I have my mock for next week finished? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't have it finished, but I can, I can finish it in 30 yeah, minutes. So, um, this, the first top 10, you're going to um, – any any changes so far? Oh, there's gonna be changes. All right, all right. That's what that's one of the things I was waiting for right there. Is there's gonna be changes. Not that I agree with the changes, but you know when you trade in to another to get another first round pick, you probably will end up trading up in the draft. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about that next week. But what do we expect before going into the draft? Uh, you know, it's, it's crazy. Um, that's a great question. Um, what to expect, of course, um, you're nervous. You're nervous. Um, you're nervous because, you you know, it's uh, the combination of just all of the work that you've put in since a youth, um, this one night, draft night. But also um, what it is, it's not. It's the combination and the start and the beginning. Because once you hear your name called, you know, it's, it's, a, different, it's a different beast now. You know, the, all the time, like, you know, we play football for fun. Now you're playing football for keeps. And when I say playing football for, for keeps now because it's a grown man's game, this is how men take care of their families and so forth. And, you know, again, basically, you you know, when you get drafted, you know, you're going in there to compete for a job and so forth. And in some cases, not all, but in some cases, you may be drafted to replace a current player that's on the team. You know, um, it's a lot that goes into it. You know, um, it's, a, it's a smile. It is, uh, it's you, you thinking that now, okay, um, I can change the dynamic of my family, you know, take care of my family, put you know, my parents in, in, in a better position and so forth, um, which is like, you know, one of the things that we all would love to do. If we, we have the opportunity to do is, of course, take care of our parents because our parents are taking care of us. And, you know, um, and doing something you love. I mean, you know, you watch, you watch guys play ball. You know, I had the opportunity, you know, to I watched Calvin Johnson play. I watched, you know, the likes of a of a Ike Taylor and 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 Detroit Palomalu play, and just to be on the same field and be able not just to compete, but to watch them in action and so forth. I mean, it's a blessing. I mean, it, it is a blessing. And then, you know, that whole leading up to the draft, you know, you having your workouts. Pre, uh, pre, you know, pre workouts and all that stuff. Your interviews and so forth. Meeting with teams, and it's this is the biggest job interview of your life. And if we're going to be honest with you, this is the biggest job interview in your life. So you want to make sure that you're taking care of uh, yourself on all of your 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 interviews when you meet with these um, front office and coaches of these organizations. You want to make sure you're you're looking good. That your your vocabulary is up to par and whatnot. Because again. The NFL, you put, it's a football league, but the NFL is a business. And I think what a lot of people have to understand is that the business side tri- triumphs over the actual athletics because, again, the, 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 the name of the game is to make money. To, to, I, I don't mean to interrupt, and I know you're um, I know you're trying to get stuff done around the house, but I can hear, like, the, the water going, and if I can hear it, everybody else can hear it. So, um no, this is probably the only place you got right now to do the do the show, and I'm not asking to to not get stuff done, but I don't want it to be annoying for the viewers, you know. But I'm glad you said interview. Now, do you know exactly what a bad interview can do to somebody who is expected yeah. to be hired yeah. in the draft? Yeah. What can a bad yeah. interview do to somebody? It can drop them off the off a team's draft board. Now, wish I wish I had a one of these days uh, I, we gonna get into one of these uh these nfl clubs and what i play for and we can go in, in in there and look in the draft room now your draft room you have like where where you're at you know the the players that you want like where you're the, the 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 guys that you really want that that can actually um oh those nerves those nerves are bad those nerves are up up and down um it is because you don't want to say anything wrong. You don't want to come off as someone that does not fit the core values of this team and what what it is that they they're they're trying to, to what they want their players to represent. Because again, you when you go out there, you represent the organization. You know, Connor, when you go to school, 
when when I go out into the world, we represent our last names. Connor, what's your last name? Davis. My last name is Ness. We're representing our parents and whatnot. See, it, it goes deeper beyond the realm of football and athletics. If you are representing where you came from, you're representing what you were taught. Again, so you want to make sure you look, you look good. You want to make sure that you can properly, you know, articulate yourself. And you want to make sure that, again, you don't say anything that's going to be very detrimental to your draft stock. Because you can say something and you can go from a first round draft pick to easily a second round draft pick. And that has happened in so many different uh, instances and cases where players were, for instance, predicted to go top 10 and fail to like 19 or 20. You know what I'm saying? Again, because interviews, interviews weren't all that good. And, and the one thing about the NFL is these GMs, they all talk. These coaches, they talk. You know, so you want to make sure you you give off the right impression. You want to make sure you give off the right impression that's going to be uh, appealing to the team, but also appealing to your character. Because character triumphs athletic ability. I'm going to so, say that character triumphs athletic ability so kind of kind of walk us through your experience nate because i actually have never heard this yet what were you expecting on that night and and walk us through the steps exactly what happened like when you got your calls whatever i just i want to hear it because i haven't heard it before and it's interesting to me just let me know what happened all right so I, of course i wouldn't have drafted the very first phone call i actually got was in the third round the end of the third round i thought it was going to be in the, it was indianapolis coast and i'm thinking i'm about to get drafted you know, and whatnot. Um, you know, they went into a different direction. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they drafted a, uh, there was a lineman from Clemson. Um, he failed fa and failed. You know, he was a early second round, late, late first round draft pick. Uh, or excuse this is me. 2009 the, NFL draft? Yeah. I want to say, was it a D tackle? Who, you, are you, you got it? You pulled it up? You said he failed or what? What pick did he was it? I think it was a D tackle that was drafted because I got the phone call. I was in a, I was in Phoenix, Arizona, and I got the phone call and I'm, I'm thinking, oh man, I'm about to be an Indianapolis coach. Um, but they went in a different. Oh. Who Here's was the D tackle from Clemson called Dallas named da uh, Daryl Scott? What, what was uh what what round was he drafted in? He went to the Rams in the early fourth. No. That's coach. who you're talking about. Coach. Uh, who went to who was the coach? Who who did the coach uh, draft in the third round? In the third round, they drafted yeah. uh Gerard Powers, cornerback out of Auburn. That's Auburn. Was it the third? Yeah. Let me see the fourth round. Give me the fourth round then. <laughs> the fourth round was uh Austin Colley, a wide receiver wide at receiver. BYU. Yeah. I thought it was it because Austin got a um, he his career got in uh, his career ended because of concussions, so I'm not mistaken. And then um, they had a conditional fourth round pick, which they drafted uh, Terrence Taylor, D tackle out of Michigan. It was him. It was him. It was him. It was him. Um, so when I got the call, uh, excited, but they went in a different direction. So you know, I was just waiting. Um, when I when I seen the call, because I had a sidekick, I had a T-Mobile sidekick. What um, is that like a flip phone or something? Man, oh, Connor, how old are you? <laughs> I'm 19. T-Mobile sidekick. Yeah, T-Mobile sidekick too. The second one. Oh, sidekick. Wait, jeez. These look like little typewriters. Oh my God, no, because it flipped. So it was a phone, but then yeah. you could flip in, in, in text. Oh, they look like typewriters. Oh, they look like. But um, yeah. Oh, then you know uh, when I seen like the, the the rounds were going by, you know, again I'm like, man. So I, I got depressed and I got sad because it was just like you know my hopes had gotten up, gotten up, and it was just like, oh man. Um, so the seventh round came and I figured I was going to be a priority uh, free agent. So teams start calling, you know, teams start calling. The draft wasn't even over with yet. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> It might have been no, but that's the first one. It's sidekick number uh, sidekick two. That's what I pulled up. Sidekick two. Our sidekick was it three? But um okay, team, I'm sorry, we're getting sidetracked. Team start calling. Huh? 
I said, team start calling. They calling team you. Start, yeah, they start calling, uh, looking for their priority, uh, <laughs> priority free agents. Um, my very first team priority free agent was uh, the Cleveland Browns, Eric Mangini. And I got a call from Eric Mangini himself. Um, it wasn't from one of their scouts. It wasn't from the GM. It was Coach Mangini that, himself. That's a head coach? Yeah. yeah he, uh, coach Mangini, um, he had coached with the, the Patriots for a good, good deal. Uh, he was their DB coach. Um, went to the Jets, was the Jets head coach when Brett Favre was the quarterback there. Um, excuse me. And then went to the Cleveland Browns. Um, and I got a phone call from him. And, you know, we talked. My now, mind you, uh, I, it was an emotional moment at that. It was emotional for me because uh, I fell out of the draft. Um, I thought I was going to get picked. Uh, I had a great pro day. I had a great pro day, put out some good numbers, um, went on a couple of pre-draft visits. So in my mind, you know, when they bring somebody in for a pre-draft visit, you're on the draft board. You're like, you're like, you know, you're one of like the 30 or 40, 50 players that they have on the draft board and whatnot. Um, so I'm, you know, in that mind, in the back of my mind, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm getting drafted. Um, I had one on four pre-draft, uh, pre-draft, uh, NFL pre-draft visits. And it's funny because every pre-draft visit I went on, I made a good friend. His name was uh, Don Carey. We went on three and there's, um, we went on three together, like back to back to back. I went to Seattle, Cincinnati, and New England. We all, all we went, all three of them, me and Don were on the same flight. And it's funny because our rooms were right next to each other. Don gets drafted by the Cleveland Browns. That's where I went. You know, but um, I was a, it was an emotional wreck for me because um, I was embarrassed. But it, this was a, this is a, you know, an immature brain and immature thinking. Um, you know, I, I had a lot of pride. Like, you know, I wanted to be back, go back home and just be like, you know, people would recognize like, oh, man, you got drafted, you know, this, that, and the other. But that wasn't the case. Um, having the opportunity as I, as I got older and understanding, having the opportunity in itself just to be able to compete, that's the bigger blessing right there. Um, and, you know, after the draft, you know, flew out there the next day, for a rookie mini camp. Now, again, the CBA has changed a bit and whatnot, because normally you have the rookie mini camp right after the draft. The weekend, the first weekend after the draft, you had the rookie mini camp. Um, went there, competed. And, you know, there's a saying, you know, there's a lot of, there's a very small percentage of low round draft picks from five all the way to free uh, undrafted free agents that make the rosters. Sometimes you're labeled as a quote unquote camp body. But that wasn't the case. Um, go there, compete, keep your head down, stay focused. And one of the things that you can easily get, you know, to get your, you know, attention is, is again, you're being, you're a pro now. You're not in college. You're expected to know your plays, your your playbook. You have day one install, day two, day three, day four, and so forth. You have to be a consummate pro. You have to study. You have to study and watch film. You have to learn how to watch them, learn how to be a pro, you have to learn how to understand the nuances of your positions and so forth. Because, you know, in college, they teach you this stuff. And in the pros, you're expected to know this. So that, that first day of OTAs or, or you know, mandatory minicamp, training camp even, day one install, day two, you need to stay ahead of the game, taking notes, you know, taking notes and, and, and knowing multiple positions. Because once you learn that and, and being great on special teams, because one thing that helps players that from the lo lower round, uh, you know, uh, players all the way to undrafted free agents is what can you do on special teams? Special teams has saved. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. Special teams has saved, you know, players, careers and, and whatnot at giving them careers. Because, again, not a lot of people want to go down and a run field a kickoff, field a punt punt return and so forth so it's it, again what can you do defensively offensively can you learn multiple positions and, and be a student of the game do you practice hard are you reliable can they trust you what can you do on special teams and how like again your character your demeanor what what I, I, again i can't stress that enough I've been on a team with, with guys that were so athletically gifted, but their character didn't measure up with the athletic talents that they have. And therefore, 
if if that does not fit, it's easy to replace you. They'll get somebody else in there. You got to stay. You got to be punctual. You got to be a consummate pro. You got to be a consummate professional because you're not you're not in at the University of Mississippi State or, or Mississippi State University no more, or at the University of Arizona or at, at Ole Miss or any or Alabama or, or Georgia. You're not there no more. You are a member of the New York Giants, the, the Miami Dolphins, the Tennessee Titans. You are a member of that organization and that franchise. So you are expected to, to know your plays. You're expected to conduct yourself, to really, again, to conduct yourself at a high level, to walk with character, accountability, integrity. You're expected to do all those things and some. I appreciate that insight because I hadn't I hadn't heard that before, and it's, it's interesting to to see what it's, it's like on draft night. It's a it's a misconception. I mean, it, you know, there's a smile because yeah, you get your name called, whether it's the first round or the seventh round, you get getting your name called, and again, it makes you feel you feel good because this is what you worked really hard for. But that's not the thing. The the real the real story, the real work begins after your name is called. 